Hi, window watchers. See what's up here on the bulletin board for today? It's a bumblebee. And it's one that was mounted and spread. And the little name and tag is right on it and everything else. And he was up there on the bulletin board today because that's what we're going to talk about. Bumblebees. Bumblebees are just a little bit different from, from other kinds of bees, mainly because of their size and because of their color. But Bob Wallstrom is over here today, and he knows a lot about bumblebees. And so he's going to tell us about them. And you know what he has here in this jar? A whole lot of bumblebees. We'll uh, put a little life into them here. All right, and then maybe we can hear him buzz, huh? You're going to be able to hear them? Maybe they... Yeah, I think maybe... Oh, now they're mad. Can you hear them buzzing, window watchers? Ooh, listen to them. Uh, those are queen bumblebees that I collected for you to see here this afternoon, just in areas right around Bo uh, Boone and Ames here, out in Boone County. Uh, those were collected on red clover and dandelion flowers. They were out after the rains trying to get a little bit of nectar which they use as food. I think uh, it might be advisable to give you a little idea as to just how bumblebees live. And I think to do that, our best bet will be to go back and draw some pictures in that the rains made it such that the bumblebees didn't have any home started this year. Do they live in hives? No, bumblebees usually live in the ground. And we'll draw this line indicating the surface of the ground. Mm -hmm. And then in the spring, these queen bumblebees search out a mouse nest or some other hollow in the ground, such as I've drawn here. And these queen bumblebees lie down, land on the ground here, and it's usually in a rather protected place with a lot of grass growing around where the entrance to the mouse hole would be. Now the mouse has left this hole. Oh, that's it's, what I was going to ask. It's very much a vacant apartment at this stage. So the bumblebee comes down into this mouse's hole and builds a little nest. In order to do that, she gets real fine grass, little bits of hair, little bits of wool that she might find around and makes a very soft nest, just like a bird would make a nest or a chicken would make a nest. And in that nest, she places a big ball of pollen. Now this pollen she collects from these various flowers that I mentioned, the dandelion this time of the year, and makes this large ball. And on top of that, she draws out a little cup affair which she makes with wax. It's a waxy substance that she builds in her body. Beeswax? It would be similar to what we know as beeswax. Uh -huh. And makes this cup on top of this ball of pollen. Now this pollen is the feed for the young bees. It has a little bit of sweetening in it that she gets from the nectar from the flowers. And it's full of vitamins and all kinds of energy that the young bees will be needing. When she gets that completed, then she lays from four to sixteen eggs in this little cup on top of this ball of pollen. How big are the eggs? Oh, they're very small, just a little bit larger than the head of a pin. Mm -hmm. And Tiny one. then, uh, strange as it may seem, the queen bee will stretch out over this nest, we'll call that the queen bee, and keep those eggs warm. Just like a chicken just, or a bird? Just like a chicken. It's very cold this time of the year for young bees, and in order to keep them warm so that they can develop and grow into adult bees, she nestles over the nest, spreads out her body quite a bit longer than it is uh, as you see them in the bottle, 
and actually keeps the eggs warm until they hatch. Now these eggs hatch in about four days into little worms, uh, we call them larvae, and then in about another week, they, uh, after feeding on this pollen, they make a little, what we call a pupil case. It's very similar to what the butterfly like a develops. Mm -hmm. And this pupa case is uh, found around here on various parts of the parts of the nest. And then about 10 days later, those emerge. The young bee crawls out of that as the full-grown bee. Now these bees that come out are what we call workers, and they do not lay eggs. Their purpose is to gather more honey more nectar from the flowers and more pollen to make more of these pollen balls in the nest uh, so that other eggs laid by our queen bee can develop into full-grown bees. Now is the queen bee, this one right there, is that the only one that can lay the eggs? That's the only one that lays the eggs that develop into the workers. Uh -huh. Now some of these workers can lay eggs which will develop into drones, the male bees, later in the season. Uh -huh. Now, uh, with these new bees coming in and bringing uh, food to the nest, the first queen, the queen that we saw here in the bottle, no longer leaves the nest for food to, to care for the young bees. Her job then is to stay in the nest and just produce eggs and uh, produce warmth for these young bees developing in, in this nest. And as we can see, the nest will have to be bigger. They expand out around the various portions of the uh, what was formerly the home of the mouse. Uh -huh. Now, in addition to these balls of pollen, the queen bee prepared a little cup affair here, which she fills with nectar, uh, which is thickened almost to the consistency of what we know is honey. And she uses that as feed while she is uh, incubating or warming these young bees. And also, when the other bees go out to collect nectar, they fill this honey pot so that she will have food inside the nest so that she won't have to travel out around the country to get food for the young bees. Oh, they just give her breakfast in bed. That's right. Then. It's breakfast in bed from there on out for the, uh, for the queen bee. And in addition to this cup, which the queen made originally, they make other cups at different places around the nest. And those are all filled with honey. Well, now after the queen bee, this one here has sat on that one nest. We'll just say that the one nest is there now. And after the queen bee has been on that one nest and the eggs hatch and uh, go into their little cocoons and come out as full-grown bees, well then, if she's the only one that's laying at the eggs, she can't sit on all the eggs, certainly. No, you see, at that stage, then you have more bees in the, in the uh, what we would call the bumblebee's hive. Yeah. And in the the fact that the other bees are in there, they are making it warmer. Just like when you get a lot of people in a room, and the temperature goes up, it gets quite warm. So if she doesn't have to sit on the No, nest. that's true. And in addition to that, uh, the temperature is getting warmer. About that time of the year, it's the middle of the summer. And the ground is warm, and the air is warm, and uh, the need for sitting on the nest has, has passed. It's just for those first few bees. Mm -hmm that she raises in the spring when it's very cold as it is in the evenings now. Well, where are some of the other places that bumblebees might build their nest besides well, in an old mouse hole? Primarily it will be close to the ground. Now you may find them under uh, logs, under piles of wood, under bricks, usually very close to the soil. And if the grass is very heavy and you have a lot of brush, uh, you'll find them down under that coat of coat of grass matted on the ground. Well, are bumblebees larger? These here look larger than regular honeybees. Yes. Are they always larger than other kinds of bees? Bumblebees are our largest bee, 
And these represent just one type of bee, a bumblebee, that we find here in Iowa. Here we have other types of bees, of bumblebees, which uh, vary a little bit in color from the bees we have there. Now that will vary from the different stripes of yellow on black on, on the bumblebee. Now this is a queen bumblebee here. That's the large bee as we see it there. Now later in the season, the first bees that she produces, uh, those that she sets on the nest to incubate, uh -huh. uh, come out as smaller bees, and these are the workers. And you notice the difference in size as compared to the queen bee. That's quite a bit smaller. Quite a bit smaller. And that first development into a smaller bee is primarily because the queen bee, being just one bee, can't provide enough food and enough warmth early in the spring for the bees that she is raising all by herself to develop into a larger full-size bee. So later in the summer, when she has a lot of the worker bees around her to help her, then she begins to produce bees which will in turn become queens for next year. And these queen bees develop just as large as she is and at the same time drones or the male bees are developed and these queen bees which are better fed and therefore better sized, better developed will be the bees that will when fall comes crawl down into the grass, down into the soil and hibernate to come through the winter and start out again as the one bee that starts a bumblebee colony. What happens to all the rest of the bees? All the other bees, including the old queen, will die due to cold weather and lack of stores. Well, what happens to this, this queen bee then that uh, buries herself in the fall, sleeps through the winter, and starts a new colony, then does she die at the end of the second she die, year? She dies at the end of the second year, yes. Mm -hmm. It's just about uh, a full 12 months life for her, uh, possibly a little bit longer. Well, they certainly don't like to be cooped up in this jar. No, do they, they don't. I think we'll have to turn them loose so that they can get out and help pollinate our flowers this summer. Uh, each of these bees will produce a nest of her own and produce a lot of other bumblebees that will help to make more red clover, alfalfa seed for us here in the Midwest. Well, I certainly thank you for, for coming over this afternoon, Bob, and talking about bumblebees with us. Uh, we're going to have someone else come in next week and talk about the regular honeybees, and it'll be kind of fun to, you know, kind of compare notes and see how they differ, and I suppose they do. So thank you again for coming, and goodbye now.